So Steve Cohen bought the Mets, and I mean, he's kind of living it up right now. I've seen him troll J-Lo. I'm seeing him talking about how he's going to spend stupid amounts of money. And it got me thinking, what if we did a Steve Cohen New York Mets rebuild, and we turn off budgets, we go absolutely insane with it, and we try to just build the New York Mets a just super team, because it seems like that's what Steve Cohen wants to do. And I'm all for it. I want to see an owner go out there and just go open checkbook, blank check, whatever you want to call it, and just spend cash. Don't care about it. Just go out there and have some fun with it and build himself a crazy good team. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the New York Mets and we're going to try to build a super team. Budgets is off. No rules. We're just going to go out and go crazy with it. And I hope you guys do enjoy it. So if you do, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section and let me know what you think about this. Are you all for Steve Cohen and like coming, coming in, kind of changing the whole stigma about owners being, you know, really frugal and kind of boring? He, he I, I want more owners like Steve Cohen where he goes out there and have some fun with it. So let's get into today's video. And of course, if you did miss yesterday's video, I'm going to put a link to it in the top corner. It was a franchise wish list for MLB The Show 21. So go check it out. Let me know what you guys have, your wants, your wishes, you know, you want to see for MLB The Show 21. So go check it out. Video will be in the top right hand corner. But now let's go hop into this Mets rebuild. So for this, I'm going to leave the contracts. Well, let's leave it off. And budgets is going to be, you know, it's, we're going to ignore budgets. We're going to have the DH on and we're going to get a little crazy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle the draft, right? We're going to go into the draft um, like I normally do. And um, the roster that I've been using or that I do use doesn't have Bartolo Colon. And there's been this rumor going around that Bartolo Colon wants to sign with the Mets and retire with the Mets. And with the way Cohen's been kind of talking about, you know, how he wants to have like a Bobby Bonilla day at the stadium and stuff like that, I could see Bartolo coming back for a year with the team. So what I did decided to do was go a little bit crazy. And I'm, I may have added a Bartolo Colon to the squad. So unfortunately, with the rosters, Bartolo Colon just isn't in the rosters anymore. Um... And if you create a player, you can only go up to the age of 45, where Bartolo is 47. But what I did was I created a big sexy and threw him on the Mets squad. Like I said, we're going to have some fun with this rebuild. It's going to be all laughs, all jokes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the draft. I'm going to draft some players and then I'm going to sim it to the offseason. And then we're going to start spending the cash. We're not going to care how much we spend. We're going to try to build a super team. And like I said, we're just going to have some fun with it. All right, so here's our draft. Casey Francisco was the first pick that we had. Um, went with a pretty good overall closer with 94 potential. We got Rob Ting, 88 potential, a nice overall as well. 83 potential for Angelo Calderon. Ezra Alez, 74 overall, 80 potential. He was kind of my shot in the dark, and it actually worked out pretty well. Like, he actually looks like he can hit the ball. And we got Sam Pollock for our last pick. So that's our draft. See you guys at the end of the season. All right. So from exclusive negotiations, the only two players that I brought back were Marcus Stroman and Dylan Betances. And then also Bartolo Colon. Um, the only way I could make it so that he didn't retire was I had to make him an 18-year-old. And then I had to turn him back to a 45-year-old. Which, yeah, I know. It sucks. But that's the only way I couldn't. All right. That was the only way that I had to make sure. That was the only way I made sure that he wouldn't retire. So I wanted to keep Bartolo for one more year so we could at least get him like as part of the rebuild, you know, and he would retire as a Met. So for arbitration, I'm probably going to offer it to everybody because I have some big trades in mind. So most likely everybody, maybe not Guillermo Heredia or Erasmo Ramirez. And then when you take a look at the contracts, probably going to offer it to everybody there. So um, Free agency. Really, the only big one we're missing is George Springer and JT Realmuto. JT Realmuto's kind of been rumored as like a possibility for the Mets. So I think I'll probably end up just making a trade to pick him up. But looking at this, I think Trevor Bauer might be someone that I try to get. I feel like just spend the money, bring him in, and just go crazy like we said we were going to. So let's see who we can get first, see what other options are available. 
but I think with some trades along with, you know, a couple free agent signings, I think we're going to be looking pretty good to start this first season. All right, there we go. Trevor Bauer signs. There's one deal in the works. All right. So, or in the books, not in the works, the work's been done. We signed Trevor Bauer. Our Ozuna went to the Nationals. Kayla went to the Padres. Okay. Giles to the White Sox. The Nationals get LeMahieu. I thought about going after LeMahieu, but I decided against it. And the Twins got us a little offer here. How about no? Because I got, an, I got a little deal in mind. I just need arbitration days to come around so that, you know, we get those arbitration offers settled. And then we can make some deals. I'll see you guys right before spring training because I have a couple deals in mind. All right, so we're about to hit spring training, and I did say I had a couple trades in mind, and one of them is for a player that seems to be shopped every offseason, and that's with the Indians, Francisco Lindor. Why not? You know, Ahmed Rosario, I feel like his time's running out with the Mets. I know there's some rumors that he may end up playing different positions this year just to see if he can get some more game time. Maybe just get, just maybe he needs a, maybe the shortstop position is just not for him. I don't know, but... I feel like time's running out. Why not just go and get a superstar in Francisco Lindor? We are going to have to trade quite a bit to make this deal happen. Ronnie Mauricio, one of the top prospects for the Mets. And then, of course, Franklin Col Col Oh, whoa, hold on. Colome is, is going to make this deal happen for Francisco Lindor. Boom. And then we're going to sign him to a contract extension because I'm not going to trade for somebody and then let them walk in free agency like that. The next one is going to be a trade for a division rival. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go for JT Real Matata. We're also going to have to trade a prospect to make this deal work. But you know what? I think I, I think they'd be okay with making this happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in, I think I threw in a pitcher in like kind of like the, the little idea that I had in my mind. What about Luke Rennie? I guess Tommy Wilson is kind of the same. And then we'll give them someone that I don't need. Maybe like Paul Sewald. You know, they need pitching. The Phillies need this pitching. Come on, take take one of these pitchers. You know you want them. What about somebody? I know you do. Who who do you want? That's the thing. I'm running low on players. What about Jacob Zanin? Boom. JT Real Matata joined the squad. And I'm going to have to sign a bunch of players to fill out the minors. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about the fact that we just kind of created a super team here. And uh, we definitely need some bench players. I'll find those. But woo, look at this squad. Talk about a team. Man, this is, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is kind of a nasty squad. Holy cow. Robinson Cano, you know, he's suspended in real life. Not really someone that I'm probably going to keep around. But I'm going to sign a couple players, fill out the rest of the team, and I'll see you guys for the start of the season. All right, so before we start the season, let's take a look at the offseason, see what we did, because you can see Yadi Molina has been brought in on a two-year deal. I know he's been, you know, he mentioned a couple teams that were interested in him. The Mets were one of them. I thought, you know what, as a backup, let's bring in the veteran. We signed Noah Syndergaard to an extension till 2027, so he ain't going anywhere. We've got Brian Goodwin on a one-year deal. We brought back the Todd father on a one-year deal. Francisco Lindor locked him up for the foreseeable future. JT Realmuto obviously has that big contract as well. Eric Sogard had decided to bring him in. I don't know why. He just kind of felt like a Mets signing to me. Uh, Ezra Will Cabrera brought him back to the Mets. And then who else? Oh, Michael Conforto. I signed him to a long-term deal as well. So a lot of, a lot of wheeling and dealing. Um, there was one prospect that I was able to sign this offseason that I wanted to point out. Caleb Hogue, good fielding stats, good speed, decent hitting stats as well. 19 years old, could potentially sneak into the lineup. You probably saw a couple of the other names that I brought in. Trevor Bauer, big time contract there. We brought in Ryan Tapera on a one-year deal. He was actually really solid last year. 2.93 ERA, really low whip. We brought in Andrew Chafin to replace Justin Wilson. And then Tim Hill, another lefty. You know, draft neck mark. We decided to bring him into the squad as well. So there we go. This is going to be the team for the year. I'm only going to give Bartolo one game. And then I'll probably bring up Steven Matz to replace him. I'll, or I'll maybe give Bartolo a couple games just so that he can get the, the last chance with the Mets. Otherwise, this is our squad. And man, is it looking scary good. It is insane. We've got 
Ed Luz Diaz as our closer as well. And then, I mean, the bench looks solid. I I, I kind of like this bench as Drupal Cabrera, Brian Goodwin, Sogard, Molina, and Frazier. A lot of aging players, but you know what? I still have faith in them. And then look at this lineup. I actually want Lindor in the two spot with Alonzo in the four. Dom Smith behind him. Actually, you know what? Let's go like something like this. Cano is supposed, supposed to be suspended, but you know what? Whatever. You know, we're 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 going a little fantasy on this one. So this is this is the squad. I mean, I know we're way over budget. What are we? Oh, we're actually within budget somehow. No way. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep my eye and see what other deals we can make. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it here, man. This team is actually looking really solid. I'm intrigued to see where we're ranked first in baseball. Okay, first in baseball. I'm, uh, I mean, sure, why not? I'm I'm excited to see how well we do. But I definitely am going to swap out Bartolo, probably bring in Steven Matz for that spot. Maybe Paul Sewald. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. We could also bring up Rennie or Peterson. It just really depends on who's doing the best when I decide to take out Cologne. But I figured, here you go. You got a 45-year-old Bartolo Cologne, you know. We'll, we'll wait and see how he does but that's the squad i figured you know let's go big let's have some fun with it and let's continue to see how this team progresses so i'll see you guys at the end of the season unless i make a trade at the deadline but i think i'm gonna leave it with this team this team's looking pretty solid so the division easily ours 104 and 58 okay all right so those moves definitely panned out and we're ranked third now so definitely some players kind of fell off just because of the age thing and their overall would drop but looking around the league the marlins and the padres were wild card teams you got the yankees and the rays the twins the athletics and the astros okay all right let's take a look at league leaders now and we had pete alonzo with home runs and then seth lugo bauer and Degrom were all there for pitching stats dom smith mcneil and conforto are here i like seeing that you got Max Kepler leading the league in the American League. You don't see that name up there too often. So that's that's an interesting one to see Max Kepler up there. And uh, doubles went to Trout. Uh, we had Jeff McNeil with 37. Tatis for triples. We had Real Muto with 7. Okay. Let's see. Home runs, 57. And 53 for Max Kepler. Really? Okay. Pete Alonso led the league. Dom Smith is up there with 45. That's good to see. You got Pete Alonso with RBIs. Michael Conforto as well. Okay, I like seeing that. Let's take a look at awards now. A gold glove and a Cy Young for Trevor Bauer. Paul Goldschmidt won MVP. Pete Alonso got third. Paul Goldschmidt, that's not a name we see win MVP that much either. So, okay. So, we're seeing some new names start to sneak in there. Zach Gallen, okay, with the athletics now. We had two Cy Young winners, Trevor Bauer, and oh, not winners, but DeGrom was second, just behind Trevor Bauer. I mean, that's a that's a pretty close race. I don't, I wonder why DeGrom didn't win it there, but I mean, I'm not gonna complain. We we had the winner regardless, so or irregardless. I guess it would be irregardless. So here we go. Let's take a look at the pitching rotation. Steven Matz. All right, so he was the right the right choice. You know, let's take a look and see where Bartolo is. He, I mean, he, 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 he was getting roughed up. 17 innings, almost an 8 ERA and a 2 whip. Like, he was getting roughed up. Steven Matz is definitely the guy we want in this spot. Probably sign him back if he wants to come back. Steve, Andrew Chafin didn't really pan out, unfortunately. Betances wasn't as good as he was last year. Tapera was the same situation. Tim Hill wasn't great. Brad Brock wasn't great. And Edwin Diaz, he was pretty good. So I don't understand why he's actually dropping in overall. Uh, Jacob deGrom, fantastic season. Really low whip. ERA's looking fantastic. And um, when you compare him, oh man, this is like super close between the two. You know, Bauer, I mean, these are I mean, who, I mean, yeah, picking between these two is pretty tough. So I can see why, you know, they were 1 2 for the Cy Young Award. So Noah Syndergaard, ooh, struggled a little bit. Seth Lugo was great. I'll try to sign him back for at least another season. And Marcus Stroman brought him back for a year. He was okay. He was okay. So we got a couple guys looking decent down here. David Peterson will probably be our five to replace Stroman, but okay. All right. I like seeing that. 
Looking at the bench, Robinson Cano is pretty garbage, so I'm hoping he retires. Uh, as Drupal Cabrera was good. 300 average, you know, almost a 400 on base percentage and 150 at bats. I mean, that's that's solid. Uh, Brian Goodwin was really good as well. You know, 18 stolen bases, almost a 300 average and 854 OPS. Like, that's, that's decent. Yachty, very limited games. Was just kind of signing him because he was rumored to be with the Mets. In, uh, or rumored to talk with the Mets or the Mets were interested in him in real life. So I figured well, give him a shot and the Todd father unfortunately didn't really deliver. So Jeff McNeil as the leadoff hitter, 28 home runs, 37 doubles, almost a 400 on base percentage. Love seeing that. Lindor, 33 home runs. The average is a little low, but you know what? Still a pretty decent season. JT Ramuto hit 227, but still had 27 home runs. So I mean, we can work with that. 51 home runs for Big Meat Pete, and uh, you can see his average is at 240 with an 844 OPS. Struck out almost 200 times though, so you don't like seeing that. Conforto, great year, love seeing that. The average is at 323, and you know 34 home runs, 111 RBIs. You've got Dom Smith with 45 home runs, 328 average, 401 on base percentage, and a 1032 OPS. Look at those stats. Ooh, okay. J.D. Davis had a pretty respectable season. Eric Sogard was decent. You know what? I'm cool with that. And then Brandon Nimmo rounding up the lineup. 17 home runs, 30 doubles, a 280 average with a 391 on base percentage. Yo, that is solid. Caleb Hogue. You know what? Who could he... He could probably play like DH for us. You know, like that's... I mean, this guy could probably come up and play DH for us too. Oh, boy. We got some decisions to make, but we're in the postseason. Let's worry about that right now. I've taken on the Miami Marlins, and they beat us. Mm, not good. All right, so let's head into the offseason. Let's make some more splashes. The Twins defeat the Dodgers, and um, Bartolo retired. Dang it, man. But you know what? He gave it his all on that last uh, that last season with us, and I figured let's have a little fun with it. Let's bring him into the team. I'm gonna bring Azrubel back for just a little bit of money, one year. I'm gonna let Betances go. I'm gonna let Stroman go. I'm gonna let Chafin go. Brock's gonna go. Frazier, actually, I'll pick up this option for Yachty, and then you know what, Eric Sogard. What what does he want? Two mil. If he takes that contract, I'm cool with it. You know what? It's a bench bat. Like, I'm not going to freak out about it. You know, two million is nothing. So, 40 man. I'm going to add Tom, uh, Tomas Nido and then arbitration. What do we got here? Oh, yeah. Everybody. Ooh. He got roughed up a bit. I don't know if I'm going to bring back Tim Hill, but I feel like everybody else will definitely get arbitration. Tim Hill, I'm not too sure about contracts. Everybody's getting a contract. I mean, most of these guys are youngsters that are, could sneak into the lineup. Ooh, some shortstops are available, but we don't necessarily need a shortstop. We got Lindor long term. So second base, we have Jeff McNeil. Third base, we had JD Davis who did well. So you know what? Like, I'm not too sure. I mean, we could add like a, a power bat, but we have that first baseman that can hit because like, Let's take, look, let's take a look at his stats one more time. Ezra Elez. I mean, those are pretty good hitting stats. Like, I don't feel like we really need to go out and sign somebody. Yeah, I don't I don't think we really need to go out and sign somebody. I feel like maybe just get that bullpen situated and we're good to go. As much as I would love to go crazy and sign players, I just feel like they're not necessarily needed, you know? Center field, we got Nimmo who did well. Eddie Rosario, maybe we could sign him for a season but like we don't need a shortstop we don't need a second baseman jack mcneil's our leadoff guy so yeah i feel like let's just spend money on some pitching again let's go crazy with it see you guys next season all right so another season we're gonna make a trade here luis guillorme and grover mcclure for colin poche the rays lefty didn't pitch a lot last year but the year before 64 innings had a pretty good season so i'm kind of hoping we get good production out of him I'm hoping. Otherwise, we're in a, a little bit of trouble. Let's talk about our offseason. Obviously, Poche. And then, you know, the, the other moves that we did make. You know, all the signings and whatnot. The trades, whatnot. So, here we are. Yeah, we're, we're rocking a pretty decent team. The bullpen, I still feel like, is a little questionable. You know, Miguel Castro, Tyler Lyons, Paul Sewald. But the more I was looking at free agency, 
it was not pretty like it was not pretty at all and then you guys can see what we're rocking here with you know degrom trevor bauer noah syndergaard seth lugo and david peterson so like starting rotations looking solid like i'm like ooh, this this gets me a little excited like i'm i'm feeling pretty good about it and then i look at the bullpen and i go maybe not we did sign dan winkler i guess i should mention that two-year deal he's gonna be our i guess he's gonna be our closer and then edwin diaz is gonna be the setup guy mate i guess and then the lineup's basically unchanged the only player that's gonna come in is Ezra alez i mean fielding wise he doesn't look great and he, apparently he can play first second third and right so he's pretty versatile kind of reminds me of like a jose ramirez but not a switch hitter so Maybe maybe he hits like him too, so that'd be pretty nice. Otherwise, this is our squad. Yadi's on waivers. I'll probably end up calling him up and send down Tomas Nido. But outside of that, it's a pretty solid team. I think I, I think I need to make a change for a pitcher, man. This bullpen does not give me any confidence at all, especially Miguel Castro. We got to get someone new. Let's try to find a new bullpen arm. So we've got Junior Santos. Sure. Shervien Newt, uh, Newton and Miguel Castro for Giovanni Gallegos. I think that's a that's a pretty decent bullpen pickup for sure. All right, that that looks a little bit better. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better than what we originally had. And then of course, you know the lineup. I guess I didn't mention that Andres Jimenez got called up, but yeah, team's looking good. I mean, I'm I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it. You know, budget somehow we're staying within budget, even though my plan was to go like above and beyond all that like i guess i could have gone out and like just signed every top free agent that was available but realistically they weren't like the best available players to get so i felt like holding off we don't have speed we don't have defense whatever i don't care but we are first ranked in baseball so let's get into it let's see how this season plays out and if we get a world series we'll call it there but if not we'll try another year all right, so we're taking on the Cubs in the division series, 94 and 68. So pretty good year. I mean, could have been a little bit better, but still a pretty solid season. Still ranked first. Good team ERA, good average. Looking around the league. Okay, Cubs, the Dodgers, the Rays, the Yankees. I think those were the same two teams just flipped last season. You got the White Sox, the Athletics. All right. Okay. League leaders. Pete Alonso for walks and then Trevor Bauer for strikeouts. Okay. Mike Trout's up there. Ooh, Kyle Lewis. I keep saying I want to get him in a rebuild. Is this the one that we go out and get it? Because there's always been some rumors that the Mets are looking for a new center fielder. Is this the time to finally go out and get that center fielder for the Mets? Because, you know, Nimmo's good. You know, the team is, you know, it's pretty solid. Like, we have a pretty good team here. But could we add a little bit more offensive firepower? You never can you can never have enough offensive firepower. So Ezra Les is there for rookie of the year in second place. And um, all right, let's take a look. Steven Matz, once again, pretty solid season. Pretty happy with that. Can't complain. Giovanni Gallegos was absolutely nasty. Tyler Lyons, you know what? Hasn't pitched a lot recently, but hey, I'll take it. He did really well. Paul Sewald was was decent. I can definitely work with that. Colin Poche, pretty solid season. Edwin Diaz was good. And Dan Winkler struggled a little bit. So maybe I move him to the setup guy. Maybe he's not our closer going forward. Jacob deGrom still absolutely insane. He's got one more year left on his deal. Trevor Bauer struggled a little bit, but still pretty respectable. Um, Syndergaard, Lugo, and then David Peterson, man. I, I need you to do better. I need you to do better. So let's take a look at our take a look at our lineup um yadi just kept falling and falling and falling and overall so just couldn't get him in the lineup just wasn't just just couldn't do it that's really what it came down to caleb hogue looks kind of nasty might need to call him up next year but okay anders Jimenez, okay season 257 not great but definitely could have been a little bit better like just not great not great as cabrera still putting up decent numbers only 38 at bats but 14 hits like that's pretty respectable uh, Brian Goodwin was all right. Sogard, a little worse. And then Tomas Nito, backup catcher, no biggie. All right, Jeff McNeil, even better than him. His like on base percentage is better last year. Put up almost identical numbers, actually, just struck out a lot less. You got Lindor, 
Ooh, what's up with Lindor, man? He's got good stats. Why Why is he falling off like that? JT Realmuto, still 27 home runs, but for some reason just doesn't hit a baseball well. I don't get it. I feel like catchers are glitched in franchise where they just don't ever do well. Uh, Dom Smith putting up great numbers. Conforto, great numbers. Pete Alonso, 42 home runs. Ain't going to complain about that. You got JD Davis, who's probably on my trade list. I'm definitely going to look to try to improve the third base spot. Brandon Nimmo. I said I was going to trade him, but you know what? He's putting up pretty decent numbers. Um, Ezra Elez, an okay rookie year. Definitely can work with that. And yeah, like I said, probably third base would be an area I'd look to improve on. I mean, what we could always do is, you know, Elez, let him be kind of like a bench bat. Put Alonzo at first or at DH. Dom Smith to first and then, you know, just get like a crazy good outfielder and then maybe trade jd davis and get a pretty solid third baseman that's always a possibility so yeah let's uh move against the cubs we get swept oh man all right that's uh pretty crazy did i say the dodgers defeated the rays it did hmm okay what a matchup what a matchup it's almost like that just recently happened cano retired thank you he got into the hall of fame i don't know about that one but I'm going to pick up this Winkler option. I'm going to pick up this Jeff McNeil option as well. Seth Lugo. Mm. I'm unsure about it. And this is going to piss off some uh, some Mets fans, but I'm going to bring back Edwin for one more season. Brandon Nimmo. Might as well. We'll bump this up as well. Tyler Lyons was pretty good, but he's fallen off pretty quickly, so I'm going to decline it. Steven Matz, if we can bring you back for like two years... 8 million is like nothing actually i could probably get you for a little bit cheaper than 8 million because you want a bullpen roll and what else we got as i want to bring these guys back but it's time to move on i'm not 100 percent sure about seth lugo i'm gonna hold off on seth lugo in real life seth lugo is a pretty solid pitcher but for some reason in franchise he just doesn't ever do well so i don't know it's just one of those things i just don't understand it so we're gonna add brett Beatty to the 40 man and then we're gonna look at arbitration so i think everybody here just to have the numbers same thing with contracts get everybody signed up all right so we do need a starter yo jose barrios would be kind of nasty that would be that would be a good pickup that would definitely be a good pickup we could use a bullpen arm there's a couple okay options there Catcher, we're set. We got JT Real Matata. First base, we've, we're good. Second base, we're good. Third base, not too many good options, so I'm not going to look there. Dansby Swanson at short. We got Lindor. Outfield. Hmm, Byron Buxton? No. Okay. And, man, this is kind of a boring free agency. It looks like we're going to have to make another trade. Unless I go out and, like, take Ben Attendi. I'm not even sold on that idea. Like, I was trying to, like, convince myself that that was a good move, but it's not. It's not. So, I think we're going to have to make some trades, make some moves happen. See you guys next year. All right, so probably the last season, and I tried to make a trade for, like, a center fielder or a third baseman. Because, like, the team looks really good. You know, Jeff McNeil, Lindor, Real Muto, Pete Alonso, Dominic Smith, Conforto, Nimmo, J.D. Davis, and then this guy we signed. I think it was first season, Caleb Hogue. I mean, he actually looks pretty good. Like, this would probably be a player that I would move to center field. And then he would take over in center field for Nimmo. Maybe move Nimmo to left. And then Dom Smith to first. Alonso to DH. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, we could actually probably just do that now. Um, boom. It would be like that. Probably be like this. If we really wanted to get, like, serious about everything. Um, JD Davis is a player I look to trade. There just really isn't a player that we could trade without trading away like the whole farm system, which I know a lot of you guys are probably like, well, then trade the farm system. It makes sense to do that. Yeah, it does. But I I, I want to keep it somewhat like realistic. Like, I don't want to go out and just clean house, you know, like trade away Brett Beatty, uh, PCA, whoever this guy is. Like, I don't want to completely clean out the house because like I feel like that's just a little too crazy. Pitching rotation, though, I did go I did go a little crazy here. I got Taylor Rogers, and then I also picked up Jose Barrios. So our starting five is nasty, and then our bullpen is pretty strong as well. Paul Sewald is kind of like the one eyesore in the bullpen. 
but I, I, I think we'll make it work. There was a trade that I did find for Kyle Lewis, but again, I saw Caleb Hogue's stats and I was like, I'm just going to give Caleb Hogue the starting spot. Like that's, that's something I'm perfectly fine with. He looks pretty good. He's got good fielding speed and hitting stats. So I feel like he'll do well really offensively. I don't think that's been our problem. It's really been like the pitching that's let us down. So I'm hoping the moves that we made here are pretty solid. I guess we could trade Paul Sewald and get like a better reliever that's a little bit better in franchise. So let's go do that real quick. We're going to get Sewald. We're going to look at relievers. And who's someone that would be good to pick up that I know is going to give us a good season and is going to help us win a World Series. So let's, let's take a look here. I'm trying to think as I go through everything. We're not going to trade with the Phillies. We're not going to trade with anybody in the East. So I'm trying to see who... What about JB Wendelkin? How you been? Iffy. Tyler Duffy's there. Scott Barlow. Wait, Scott Barlow. I feel like I get him a little too often recently. So you know what? Let's go for... I get Emilio Pagan quite often. Ryan Barucki's kind of nasty, but that was only 12 innings, so... Do we, do we ransack the Rays once again? See if we can get somebody from the Rays? Hmm. I think we're going to go to the Rays. We're going to get Matt Bowman because that should be a pretty easy trade to make. And then they can have a 25-year-old who's 65 overall, which means we might be able to get someone a little bit better. Okay, we can't get him. We can get Diego Castillo, which... He's been throwing 100 innings and been doing pretty well. So I'll take that shot. Let's do that right there. We'll get Diego Castillo. Normally he doesn't do well in franchise, but I'll take a shot on him. I'll take a shot. Why not? So yeah, this is our team. Looks pretty nice. Looks pretty good, I would say. And then of course, we're still first in baseball. We lost a little bit of power. I'm not too worried about that though. You know, I feel like we're still going to put up a lot of numbers. We're still somehow within budget, which is absolutely insane to me with all these contracts that we have, but we did it. So there is that, you know, I brought back as Drupal Cabrera. I felt like it, it felt right. You know, it was one of those things where it just felt right to bring them back. And this is the squad. I mean, this is a nice looking team. So yeah, let's, let's just hop into it. Let's see how the season plays and see you guys at the end of it. All right. So the season went well, like very well, 117 and 45 won the division. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing. So easily the best team in baseball era is looking good on um, base slugging average is looking pretty solid and looking around the league i mean the rays are consistently doing well the white wow the white Sox, the white Sox and the angels i'm intrigued by that lineup let's go take a look at the white Sox lineup madrigals oh okay verdugo eloy robert brandon belt okay trevor stories there i mean offensively that's a that's a pretty strong team I'm intrigued to see what their pitching looks like, too. So let's go take a look. Giolito, Max Fried, Rodon, Chirinos, Reynaldo Lopez, Waka, Darvish. Interesting. Interesting squad. Only nine innings pitched for Aaron Bummer. That's why I don't like having two setup, uh, two setup pitchers because that's what happens. One of them just doesn't get enough innings. I mean, the Angels have definitely spent some money as well, and it looks like it's doing it's doing decent. You know, I would I would say that looks pretty solid. And I'm kind of interested to see what their offensive lineup looks like as well. Yep. Tim Anderson. Okay. Michael Brantley, Trout, Rendon, Mountcastle, Otani. Oh, wow. Okay. And Adley Rutschman. Jeez. They've been wheeling and dealing. So that, I mean, that would make sense why they're so good. I mean, Trevor Bauer, Noah Syndergaard. We got Giovanni Gallegos. Jacob deGrom all winning or all having league leading stats. Yoan Moncada's with the Rays. Okay. That's a big move. Like that's that's a big pickup for the Rays at third there because he's hitting 351 with 33 home runs. They also have Willie Adamas hitting the ball pretty well. All right. Okay. Uh, 49 home runs for Voigt. 49 for Freddie Freeman as well. RBI leader Javi Baez. Mike Trout. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the awards. A gold glove for Dom Smith, Cy Young for Noah Syndergaard, and Delivery Man of the Year for Gallegos. We don't have anybody in the MVP race, which is disappointing. Mike Trout wins an MVP back-to-back -back years. Max Fried won Cy Young. We got Syndergaard and Bauer 1-2 with Sixto in the mix. Okay, 
Batting title went to Moncada and Harold Ramirez, Gallegos, Ty Buttry. Okay, some interesting names here. All right, I'm intrigued to see how the team did. Steven Matz had his worst season, but you know what? He's been really solid, so like I'm not going to freak out about one bad year. Edwin Diaz, really solid. You got Colin Poche, who struggled. Diego Castillo put up really good numbers. Love to see that acquisition paid off. Same with Tyler not Tyler Taylor Rogers Tyler's his brother right um, Taylor Rogers you got Dan Winkler who did well and then Giovanni Gallegos very happy with the bullpen and then you look at our pitching staff you got a solid solid outing from DeGrom I mean how is that not Cy Young right there Trevor Bauer Noah Syndergaard like one two three you have Cy Young candidates Jose Barrios should have been in the Cy Young candidate talk as well I mean look at that and then even David Peterson, he finally puts up a good season. Uh, man, that is a scary rotation. All right, so Andres Jimenez slowly getting better. He's only 24, so he should improve as well. Um, Rob Ting from season one, the South Korean. Uh, that's Those are good numbers. He's not a power guy. He's not a power guy, but he's going to get on base. I like seeing that. What else we got? Azrubal Cabrera. I mean, OPS is pretty good. I'm... I'm okay with that. And Ezra Alez. Wow, he needs to play. <laughs> Holy cow. Look at those attributes. And then he had a really good year. 347 average, almost a 400 on base percentage, and 200 at bats. Like, he needs to play. But where? He can play third. Oh, okay. Okay, he can play third. Okay, so we got McNeil who... Hit the ball very well. Good leadoff hitter. Lindor, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, home run totals and RBIs have been pretty good. Same with the doubles. It was just, you know, the average was a little low, but he's still putting up pretty solid numbers. JT Real Matata kind of sucks. <laughs> um, Pete Alonso did pretty well. I mean, like, they're not bad numbers. You just want a little bit better production from the best catcher in baseball. You know what I mean? Um, Pete Alonso, pretty solid. Dominic Smith has been outstanding this entire this entire rebuild like look at those attributes insane conforto a little bit of a down year in terms of like power but still really good numbers 402 on base percentage unreal uh brandon nimmo still putting up really good numbers that's why i didn't want to get rid of him like his bat is actually still pretty solid jd davis not terrible and then caleb hogue struggled as well so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put ezra ezra les playing third base for us he's gonna he's gonna make the move over there Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pete Alonzo wasn't even playing. Oh, that's the no DH. What about the DH? So what do we have here? Alonzo, Dominic Smith, Ezra Les. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Nimmo. Maybe he doesn't lead off. Maybe we let McNeil still lead off. Maybe go something like that for that lineup and go from there. So, okay. I want to see what our, our farm system's looking like as well. We've got 81. We have this guy here who... I was kind of hoping would have been good enough to feature, but just not yet. And then you got PCA, Calderon. Was that a season one pickup? We got Brett Beatty. Who was, where did I get Calderon from? I don't remember. I, don't, I really don't remember where I got Calderon from, but okay. Division rivals, the Braves. And we, please don't do this to me. Come on, don't. No, don't do this to me. Not again. You know, like, don't do this. All right, so we got Degrom here. I know I'm kind of covering up the 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 lineups. I'll kind of I'll kind of lean over for you guys. So, all right, here we go. One, two, three inning. I like it. We're facing Ian Anderson. They got Lourdes Gurriel. I didn't even notice that until he came up to the plate. Danny Santana, Zach Collins. So a couple changes, but it looks like a pretty standard Braves lineup. And we don't have a hit. We don't have a hit. What's going on here? He's perfect through four innings. We got to break this up. Freddie Freeman goes deep. No. No. He's still perfect. We're down two. We're down four. Oh, no. Okay. Um... Let's go Dio Castillo. He gets, he's got a perfect game. Okay. Whew. At least that doesn't happen. 
and then okay first and second two outs and we don't score there come on man um i guess castillo continues our run scores five nothing six nothing bases are loaded we'll go to the lefty he gets out of it six nothing it looks like our season's over like how though you know what i mean how this team was so good how are we getting rocked like this and we only had one hit okay we got we got a couple more hits we added a run or two but still huh how it makes no sense this team is way too good to be underperforming like that that's insane man insane I'm, I'm baffled i'm absolutely baffled holy cow how did we not how did we not win like un unreal unreal oh wow we were there was a perfect game going through what seven innings six and a half innings something like that six and two third in wow all right i mean that's that's how it's gonna end though like i can't I don't really know what else to do. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And of course, get in the comment section. Just get in the comment section. I'm, I'm mind blown, guys. I really don't know what happened there. That's going to end it. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I'm leaving you with two videos on screen now. Go check them out if you haven't yet. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.